like Benson, I'm a who that. I'm a who that. Long as I'm living, I'm a who that. Lose or winning, I'm a who that. Sports coma, yeah, this is where we do that. 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 Boogie like Benson, I'm a who that. I'm a who that. Sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Somebody please better help. Running this thing like elf. Thank God every day I'm not a felt. Go to YouTube live with Big Q and the guys. If you ain't ride or die, the bandwagon get flipped. Been marching in, that was way for the ring. I was yelling out your shame for the championship. Fucking on town, duck down. Falcons pluck, get shut down. Panthers ain't much to touchdown. The vision really belong to us now. So much hate on the Saints, you could probably tell. Ever since Bounty Gate hit the NFL, when things seem fishy, then you probably smell. The crooked referees are Roger Goodell. Yeah, fucking like this, and I'm a who that. Every day I'm living, I'm a who that. Lose or winning, I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that, eh. Where we do that, eh. Where we do that, where we do that, where we do that, eh. Boogie like this, and I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. You're listening to the sports coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're now rocking with the sports coma. Big Q and the guys where we have intense, entertaining, and educating. And enlightening sport talk from your favorite sports fan. Please feel free to strike upon the like button. Please feel free to share the show on your social media feed. We up in this thing, baby. In the in the throes of free agency, we rolling, man. The black and gold are making moves, man. But not only just the black and gold, the entire NFC South is getting busy. Atlanta, Carolina, they swinging for the fences because they see, they think that the NFC South is wide open. And they all are trying to do the very best they can do to build their teams up. So very, it's going to be very competitive. A lot of people were saying last year that the NFC South is going to be, in the words of my uh, one of the great Saint Think Tank finest, Willie, trash. No, they're not going to be trash. The NFC South, man, is building up. They are going to be very competitive. And the Saints are in the midst of it. So... You got a new running back, New Orleans. Who that nation worldwide? You got a new running back. So shout out to the fam. Appreciate y'all joining us for this episode of the Coma. Much love to the fam. Everybody involved. We're gonna be up in this thing. Won't hold you for very long, I promise. Because at seven thirty, we got the NFC South Super Friends Roundtable with myself, Big Low, my brother Rashad, and Dave from the PNP Camp. Big Game James. Uh, representing the Buck Nation, will all be in the NFC South Super Friends Roundtable at 730. And for the family members, you can catch it here on this platform or uh, on, on their platforms. So it's going to be fun tonight talking crap with the rest of the family members. So please feel free once this stream is over with to follow us over there and throw some support over there as well. Just hit the, the show is already here. You can just pop the link and go to that when it, when it becomes. So anyway, today the saints did some really good things today in terms of picking up help. I thought, you know, we covered this on TSC Q and a live on our Tuesday stream. Shout out to our supporters and platform. I thought, you know, I was like, okay, we looking at Sheldon Rankins could be the return, right? Well, no, the Houston Texans gave Sheldon Rankins $10 million on a one-year deal. Nowhere the Saints was going to go near that. The estimations was between five to six million, and they gave him $10 million for a one-year deal. So shout out to Sheldon Rankins for getting him a little payday over there with the Houston Texans. Uh, so anyway, that was out of the way. So the Saints decided to go in a different direction. So, and they did indeed. And not only did they get one, they got two defensive tackles and Man, the, this is it's going to be very interesting. And listen, the way the Saints are moving in free agency right now, they are doing some things. They are appeasing some moves. Um, there, there is a good energy and vibe around the team that I hope carries from the offseason into the into the end season or the on season. That's the thing. We got to carry that momentum into the on season and make it translate into success. Shout out to Slade Hemisphere, Trevon, uh, Tory. What's up, brother? Tory Shepard Sr. A roll shout out to you, Rose City Elite KT, Eric Howard Taino, Baraka. Uh, who else we got chiming in? Arvin, brother Arvin's in this thing. Mont Dog, 
But good to see you. Daniel Burton, shout out to you. What's up, brother Randolph? Shout out to my brother Randolph from Keeping It Real. The podcast doing the th- doing this thing. Brother Felix is in this thing. L- uh, Lee Jed, 88, shout out to your fam. Appreciate you for being in. Much love, 504 Cole, Ma- uh, Molly, Molly Mall, Josh Go 23, Dana, shout out to your baby. Claude is Poppy 504. Who else we got chiming, man? Gundam, shout out to you as well. OG Jerry's in the building as well. Appreciate the support, my brother. Uh, Millie Two Ills in this thing as well. Good to see you. Uh, uh, who else we got? OG Stoner 1017. Shout out to you, OG. Demi, what's happening, Demi? Shout out to you, baby. Appreciate you for stopping by. All right, Pammy Whammy, what's happening, Queen? Shout out to you as well. Uh, everybody, man, everybody in the building. What's up, Debo? Shout out to, shout out to Debo, brother Prime. Good to see you as well, sir. Much love to you. Uh, and everybody, man, everybody in the building. What's up, St. Doug? Shout out to brother St. Doug Strider. Good to see you as well. Um, everybody, Country Rail, High Rise 8. Uh, I think I got every. What's up, Black Knight? Steven Glass. What's up, Steven? Shout out to you, bro. Uncle Deuce is in the building, Colorado, Rougarou. Everybody, man, is in this thing, man. Hit the like button for your dog, man. Hit the like button. Now, like I've been saying, man, what's up, Tron? Shout out to you, brother Tron. Good to see you, bro. Appreciate you being in here, man. Much love to you, my friend. All right, so the the Ant Man, what's up, Ant Man? the The big thing that's happening with the Saints, and I'm gonna show y'all up the updated depth chart, unofficial updated depth chart, and the current, uh, I guess, uh, estimations of the Saints' salary cap currently. We know it's all an illusion, you know, but. <laughs> The Saints move like none other. What's up, Devon? Shout out to your brother. Good to see you in the stream, man. Appreciate you, brother. Keldrick, I see you, brother. Appreciate you as well. Ferg318, much love. Brother Prom says, Jameis Reason makes me love that brother more. What's up, Jared? Shout out to you. I'm going to cover something on that, man, as well. Brother Claude, shout out to you. Yeah, I'm going to go over what Jameis was saying because he tweeted out something. I'm going to read the whole damn thing. So let's just get into some of the news, man. Let me get stop running my mouth <laughs> and jump right into the news, man. And this is some of the things that we're going to talk about. We're going to start off with this report for me and Rappaport. Talking Put one in the chat backs. if you can hear. Let's talk about running backs. Sources say Miles Sanders, the former starting running back for the Philadelphia Eagles, has landed with the Carolina Panthers. This deal just coming together a couple minutes ago. The Carolina Panthers have been looking around for a running back. Found one in a game breaker they like. Miles Sanders now comes in for a Carolina Panthers team that really has been doing doing nothing but adding weapons to this offense. We'll see who the quarterback ends up being, but adding weapons. Hayden Hurst first, and then Miles Sanders today. That was not the only running back news we got. Jamal Williams, the former Lions touchdown maker, obviously was out in Detroit yesterday when they signed David Montgomery. He agrees to terms with the New Orleans Saints. He gets a three-year deal for $8 million, fully guaranteed. Talking about running. All right, so there it is. Ian Rappaport from the horse's mouth himself. Uh, Jamal Williams, three-year deal at $12 million, $8 million fully guaranteed. Good move. And people who, um, a lot of people are pretty familiar with who Jamal, Jamal, what's up, AJ? What's up, Brian? Shout out to you, bro. Appreciate you. Y'all for stopping by. A lot of people know how good Jamal Williams was for the Detroit Lions last year. A lot of people from Detroit was upset to see Jamal Williams leave. Now, Carolina, getting Miles Sanders was a nice move by the Carolina Panthers to add him. That, that was a pretty slick move. Hey, Nurse as well. So you can see these people are building weapons around what probably is going to be C.J. Strode uh, and the defense. You know, they're trying to get that going as well. So Carolina, since they hired their staff, they have focus. They have now a, 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 a focus and attention a, a that they didn't have from the last four years. And they're desperate, well, I ain't going to say desperate, but they're most certainly focused to winning. And now they got Frank Wright in there, who's a good coach, and it's only a matter of time before they start competing with the Saints for the NFC South. What's up, Chief, uh, Chief Peanut? Shout out to you, my brother. Good to see you in the building, man. Jamal Williams is a fantastic pickup. Also provides a guy that has uh, experience. The backup, Elvin Kamara. We know Elvin Kamara is facing uh, some disciplinary action from the NFL. Now, he could very well beat his case, very slim margin of the slimmest that he beats the case uh, with this whole thing. I don't think he does. But then again, you know, you never know, man. You know, the justice system is blind. The lady wears <laughs> she wears a blindfold, you know, holding the scales. Y'all seen the picture. What's up, Coach Todd? Shout out to you. Uh, Week TV. Good to see you, fam. Appreciate you as well. Mr. No Charge to keep it real. Keep you. Keep, appreciate you, brother Clarence. I see you. Yeah, this is cool, man. Getting Jamal Williams. 
that started to broadcast off. Really love that move, man. And this is what it is here from the South. You heard the contract from me and Rappaport's mouth. Certified score. New Orleans Saints signing Jamal Williams three-year deal, $12 million deal worth $8 million guaranteed. Very slick. Not an expensive deal for a good young running back with a lot of potential. Led the league with 17 rushing touchdowns in 2022. On the way to his first 1,000-yard rushing a uh, season has 3,652 yards, 30 scores on 95 or nine, excuse me, 915 career carries around the NFL. So there you go. So the guy had 17 rushing touchdowns. The Saints get him on a three year deal worth 12 million, but eight, uh, eight of which is guaranteed. Very, very smart move by the New Orleans Saints. And we were thinking about, well, what the Saints do, but you do realize that the Saints really needed uh, a experienced running back because if Elvin does miss time, and then again, if he stays. But this is like a complimentary situation. So it's good to see and refreshing all at the same time for the Saints to be adding uh, talent around this, the offense. And they have just keep giving these guys. So you add another weapon. This guy, if you watch him, how he runs the ball, has speed, power. Love this kid. Still very young adds another dimension to the Saints offense and he'll stick around him and Elvin Kamara could form quite the tandem once everything irons itself out from the legal from a legal standpoint with AK-41 but the Saints man listen this is a huge and you know this is a really solid move for the Saints offense so Dennis Allen and Mickey Loomis and Kai Harley are now giving the Saints offense the weapons they need to carry their own water Dennis Allen told us last year when he started it off that he wanted the power running game. But Jamal Williams definitely represents that. I definitely rubber stamped this one, man. I like this move right here. The contract was really nice. And to get Jamal Williams, a guy that can come in, a veteran back that can come in, that's still really young, 17 rushing touchdowns, a, a, a guy that moves north and south, could use his stiff arm, got a little cut ability, can catch the ball out the backfield too. You know, so this guy is very talented, man, and it will work, work work really well with the Saints offense. So I love this move, man. This was a I rubber stamp this move certified buck 15. That's what I say on this one. This was a very good deal from a contractual standpoint, as well as a talent standpoint to get Jamal Williams to back up Elvin Kamara. Let's keep it going. And remember, I'm not throwing or, or heaping a bunch of expectations on our offense. All I want us to do, family, is to carry our own water. I've been saying that little term. The defense carried the water for the offense for much of the season last year. I just simply want the offense to carry its own water. If the Saints offense can operate within, from a statistical standpoint, inside between the 10 to what, top 10, to top 12, somewhere along in there, we should be fine. The defense, we'll see how it look. We got new coaches there. We got new interior linemen. We'll all go in all this before the draft. So the Saints get the running back that they want. They get the running back to compliment Kamara and even, re- you know, replace him when he leaves or when he gets hurt or, or or if he has legalities that he has to deal with or he's suspended or whatever happens. You got Jamal Williams there and the Saints still not done. So they, you know, a lot of these moves you anticipate the Saints will make in a draft, but they're feeling a lot of news moves in free agency, which opens up the draft. It really does. So pretty good, Gr- good, good moves all around. That's right. Uh, shout out to the who that dude. Appreciate you, bro. Good to see you, man. Grant Jackson. Shout out to you. He says starting QB. I think is a very good backup. Even if he doesn't, if he gets a chance, he will run it away. Just my thoughts. Big Q. Thank you, man. Grant. Shout out to you. Uh, fan. Appreciate you there. Love like the moves the Saints made today. Let's move on to the other moves to talk about the two spots inside of the defensive line that the Saints felt today. Early today, they signed Kalen Saunders, who is an undersized defensive tackle from the Kansas City Chiefs. He played that with the Chiefs. He had his best year last year. 6'1", 324 pounds, undersized. Some say six foot, some say six foot one. But listen, if you put the tape on and watch uh, Kalen Saunders play, the guy is just, just brutal. He's brutal and never high motor, never stops, uh, strong as a mule, uh, very athletic too. I know y'all seen at Nalls and probably by now the, the, the footage of him doing backflips at 300 pounds. You know, <laughs> they got guys that weigh 100 pounds that can't do that, man. 
But Saunders is the guy the Saints picked up on. They brought him in, and this was swinging from left field. A lot of people were looking at myself, looking at, okay, how about uh, Sheldon Rankins? Q, why not Sheldon Rankins? Well, the Texans signed uh, Sheldon Rankins today. They gave him one year at $10 million. There's no way the Saints was going to offer Sheldon Rankins $10 million to come here and play defensive tackle. You know, they the, the Texans kind of escalated. They were anticipating a lot of the, you know, Free agency was anticipating his contract to be around five to six, maybe seven million. Them people went ten million for one year. You know, that's the one thing about bad teams. You know, they desperate, so they have to pay a little bit more to get guys to come to them. So no way the Saints was gonna do that. But I'm not mad at this move as the Saints make the move to get this guy. So now they added two people. The second being Kalen Sunders. The news reported by Palacero that it's a three year deal worth fourteen and a half million for Mister Saunders. Uh, stuff. He's six feet tall, 324 pounds. This is the guy we talked about. A nasty interior defensive stuffer that does have somewhat of a push. Good with his hands. Violent hands is a lot of people refer to him as. If you watch the film, very active guy, not afraid of contact. And usually it takes two guys to block him. So, I mean, this is, this is fun to see a, a disruptive force like Saunders get an opportunity to be here. He's a two-time champion since being a third-round pick back in 2019. He had a sack and two tackles against the Eagles in the game. Saunders had a career high, three and a half sacks, 48 total tackles, and eight QB hits last season, appearing in 16 games for the KC Chiefs. New Orleans also added Nate Shepard. Uh, we'll talk about that one on the next article. So shout out to uh, Jimi Hendrix for dropping that scoop. Canal Street Chronicles has this one. From Nathan Shepard, the former Jet is headed to New Orleans. You remember, we shopped in the Jet store. We picked up Demario Davis and brought him here. We also picked up Marcus May and brought him here. Kind of a mixed bag. Demario was the truth. Marcus May still a bit of a mixed bag. Missed six games for the Saints last year. Now facing several different legal issues from the DUI he picked up with the Jets and from something that he developed locally here now. So, a mixed bag there, but we want on DeMario. Can Nathan Shepard be more on the DeMario Davis side of the fence? So the Saints expected to sign, and it is official that they did sign a Nathan Shepard to a deal. The Saints had the process of revamping that line. Now, Shepard is a five-year veteran. He played in 73 games in his career, has three, 33 QB hits. He finished last year with the grade of the 69, almost 69% from the PFF grade system. He also had his best season as a run defender. Not exactly the guy to change the defensive line, but he's a solid depth piece nonetheless. Right now, yes, he is a starter. But I don't anticipate Nathan Shepard being anything but a reserve. I don't think he'll become a starter. I think this is a reserve move. I still think probably the, I still think most certainly the Saints top need in the draft will be a guy to put next to uh, uh, Saunders come the draft. Mozzie Smith, Big Eka from Baylor. You make the charge. I mean, it could be uh, the, the, the brother from Pitt. You know, depending on who they like, but definitely defensive line, interior speaking, is definitely something the Saints could be looking at here as well. So we'll see how it all shapes out. Three signings by the Saints today. Very good moves to get some help there. Remember, let me give you guys the depth and say, well, Q, what does the depth chart look like? Well, let's take a peek. Here's the depth chart right here. Let me get a little closer for you guys so you can see that stuff there. Yeah, there you go. Wham, bam. So this is the Saints defense unofficial depth chart as it stands. You see Cam there, but interiorly speaking, you see Mr. Kellen Saunders there and Nathan Shepard there. And they're the only interior guys you currently have. Prince Amelie is a practice squad, 300 pound defensive tackle. Not much playing time. You got passing your own outside with Peyton Turner there. Remember, if the Saints need to, they can kick passing your inside. He has played inside for the black and golden, had some success. As well. So, do the Saints operate with the new passing yo as the guy? I eventually think Nathan Shepard will become a reserve swing defensive tackle. The Saints still have extra defensive tackles. They're going to have to add the improve the interior defensive line. I think these are good moves for the black and gold. I like Saunders, a young defensive end. We still not done. The draft has to be the part where the Saints add to it. So they're doing a, a pretty, I have to give the Saints some good reports here. I have to give them some good grades thus far 
and making some moves. They have not exactly been quiet. They started off prior to free agency getting the car, getting the car that they wanted. They got him as well. They made a uh, piece with Michael Thomas, gave him a one year prove it deal, which was big for the Saints, gave Michael Thomas a one year prove it deal to prove it. They still have Chris Olavi, Rashid, Shaheed, Keith Kirkwood, Quine Baker, and Trey Quine Smith. And also don't forget Kirk Merritt, who balled out for him. So, and then they turn around and add Jamal Williams, who will become the number one backup behind AK-41. So the Saints have done a, done a phenomenal job right now. The next thing is, you know, as we move forward, what happens with Andrews Pete? Does the Saints do anything with Andrews Pete? Do they restructure his contract as well? Because all questions pretty much have been answered. In terms of the Saints offense, the Jameis Winston decided to stay with the team as well. And that was good. By the way, let's segue to that. Saints Jameis Winston says he's still a championship caliber starting quarterback. And this is from Bleacher Report. Scott Polachek is covering it. He will back up Derek Carr. The Saints during the 23 campaign, the Florida State product believes that he's still the championship caliber starting quarterback. And he said as much in his Twitter release when he put this lengthy a commentary up here and we're going to cover it on the show. And he says, Jabu wins this is why I came back. And he explains it first. I love this city and all of my professional career. I've never felt so culturally into with a family base. Uh, he says, fan, I say family, the saints family family that I've met have been incredible. Y'all have made me and my family feel at home. That's why last season was so disappointing to me. I want to see this team and city succeed. I know great things are ahead for this team and this city. I was led here by the spirit. That's why I would never run away from this new challenge. The things that led me here are still here. A stable organization, a championship caliber team, a great family base. This year's team, like last year's team, built a win, a Super Bowl. Let, he said, let there be no doubt. I'm still a championship caliber starting quarterback in this league. However, getting healthy and staying healthy is my number one priority, and I have suffered three devastating injuries over the last two years. I need to stay healthy to assist this team in getting to where we want to go. Most importantly, I need to stay healthy to get me where I want to go in my career. With that being said, I will serve and lead however I need to see this organization and city win. I'm proud to say for one more year, at least, who that? So who that to you, Jameis? Shout out to you, brother. Well said. And uh, the sentiments of the city, like I said, when you are a person and, and this has been done before, when you come to the black and gold city, the black and gold organization, you come to the city. It's unlike many cities and a lot of teams, places have, you know, teams. But it's something to be said about how the family base here rap takes the team and you know, and support the team. If you, and this, this is what we've been saying for years. If you represent us in the correct way and you show us that you about the business of winning and you about the business of being a true professional, we'll uphold you and we'll respect you. We'll, we'll do that. But if you don't, you're going to have, you're going to feel it. It's just what it is. We're going to up and that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's supposed to be. You represent us the right way and we'll in return, that energy will come back to you. I'm not going to give you energy that you don't deserve. That don't how it works. That's a violation of the universe. You get what you give. If you represent the city, we represent you. We'll put you on our shoulders. We'll elevate you. And we've been doing that for years here, even to our detriment. And early on, when we supported the Saints for 20 something odd years before they won their first, had a fir their first winning season when they went eight and eight. Then years later, when they finally got to the playoffs and then finally when they won the playoff game. So it's not been easy for the black and gold nation. Never that everything that we had, we had to fought hard for. And sometimes we had to fight the team to get right. Just like now we had to show you who the ball says and what we need, what we want you to do. But the thing is, a lot of people that was mad at Dennis Allen, listen, these moves, you got to respect what the Saints are doing. They're not sitting on there. You know what? watching everything fly by you. They're showing you that they're involved. They did this last year, by the way, when they got involved in free agency and was doing some things. Now the next move is Dennis Allen simply pulls, pull a, what I call a David Griffin, 
who is the uh, VP of the Pelicans over there, which means just stay out the way, do your job, handle your defense. Don't try not to say too many stupid things and allow a talented offense led by Carr, who's a leader. We didn't have much of a leader when Jameis went down. The offense was leaderless. And with Carr there, there should this should represent in wins, and the offense should carry its own water again, which is what I want. We, if the offense carries its water and the defense do what it did similarly to last year to, and the special teams improved, the Saints will go back to the playoffs. They will. But these things happen. They have to happen. So we'll see how it all translates off season into in season or on season, however you want to term it. It's it's two it's two parts that make a whole, and they're doing this part. They're doing a fantastic job fulfilling needs and not sitting on their hands. They're doing a fabulous job and picking up talent. The Derek Carr move helps the offense big time. The Jamal Williams deal behind Elvin Kamara giving them a veteran. Running back, a young running back with potential, 17 rushing touchdowns last year, phenomenal. So if Elvin misses time because of his legal issues, you got a guy that can help out. And don't forget, Taysom Hill still will participate in that realm. You got an up-and-coming young Chris Olave who was phenomenal last year. Rashid Shaheed the same way. And then, of course, a draft that once the Saints finally get through free agency and get to the draft, the Saints draft could be very well wide open with them pinning a lot of their moves so far early in free agency. Quarterback, backup running back, and they had two defensive tackles, one for depth and the other one a starter. Pretty slick, Saints. Like what you're doing, keep it up. All right, so anyway, shout out to Jameis too, man, on this great speech that he threw out here. More news for the Black and Gold Nation. Deontay Harris Harty is a Buffalo Bill now. He got his bills, he got his money. And he got his bills, and he's a Buffalo Bill. It's, he, it's, they added the speedy return, man. He agreed to a two-year contract. Shout out to Deontay Hardy, man. Another success story from the city of New Orleans. They found this guy at, what, Appalachian State? And turned him into a Pro Bowl return, man. Shout out to the New Orleans Saints organization. And now De- Deontay Hardy has signed a lucrative deal with the Buffalo Bills at two years at $13.5 million with $9.5 million guaranteed uh, assi- assigning uh, or his base, his 9 dollars base salary. But $5 million of the 13 and a half is guaranteed for Mr. Deontay Hardy. So, Shout out to that brother as well. And he was banged up last year and uh, he found a new home. So shout out to him, man. I, and I, like I said, I love the success stories. You know, you look at guys like Shy Tuttle, undrafted guy that was banged up, hurt all of his college career. Most of came in here, worked his tail up, become a starter and the Saints got a contract with Carolina. Deontay Harris Hardy from Appalachian State. You had to turn over rocks and tra- travel through San Balai and go underground to find where this dude was at. The Saints found him, turned him into a Pro Bowl return man. You know, added him to the team. He's now getting broke off, chipped off. You look at guys like Cade Nellis, seven round draft pick the Saints picked up. Got broke off, 20 plus million dollar deal from the Atlanta Falcons. You could do nothing. You can't, I can't do nothing but be happy for guys that are the underdogs, the underdogs when people don't give them an opportunity and they shine and they make a way. They show them, hey, listen, man, I might have came from the smallest school that you can that you can barely find on the map, but guess what? I'm playing with the biggest stars in the NFL. So shout out to those guys that get the success. I love success stories, man. It makes you, that just shows some of our young people and some of our older people and in between that whatever that success is not elusive to you or anybody else. You seize your opportunities. You get yourself in straight. You get yourself in shape for the position, not in shape, you know, men- mentally, spiritually, and physically. It all correlate. And opportunities will come to you. They will come. Anyway, let's look at the draft or look at the cap, rather, over the cap.com slash Saints, New Orleans Saints. Shows right now, according to their numbers, the Saints are $338,000 in the black right now after some of the moves that they're signing. So they don't have the new contracts of guys like Saunders or the other defensive tackle, uh, Big Nate up here or Jamal Williams, but that'd probably be added later on. But they did rework everybody's deal. They gave Jameis the deal. We talked about that on the TSC Q&A live show and the show 
Uh, we talked about Jameis deal at one year. They said it was eight million at the time. You can go as much as eight, but it's really four million. And Jameis is uh, that really was something I just really didn't see happen. I thought Jameis would leave. You become a free agent and perhaps go to Tampa Bay and take their job like Baker Mayfield did today. Did y'all see that? The the Tampa Bay Buccaneers signed Baker stinking Mayfield as their quarterback. You know, that was really interesting as well as Carolina taking on Andy Dalton for two years at what, 11 million? My goodness. But Jameis took the restructured deal. Mike Thomas took the new deal. One year, 10 million something. Marshawn, everybody got restructured. Now, Andrews Pete is the guy that's left there due to Saints touch his deal. I think eventually something will happen there as well. So anyway, pretty interesting as we go. And this is some of the moves right here from Sport Track to show you some of the moves the Saints have made thus far in the signing period. It doesn't have the, let me see if I can refresh it, refresh it and they add Jamal Williams to it. And they do. So this is some of the moves the Saints have made right now. The free agents the Saints have picked up. You see Carr there. You see Caden Nellis. Well, Caden Nellis went to Atlanta. Shai Tuttle is showing all of the departures as well. That Caden's gone three years, 21 and a half million. Shai Tuttle gone three years, 19 and a half million. Davenport one year, 13 million. Jamal Williams three years, 12 million. Love that deal for the Saints. That is going to be eight. This going That Jamal Williams sign is going to be big for the Saints offense, fam. Let me tell you something. Andy Dalton's gone. He signed the, the, the two-year deal with them. Deontay Hardy, I just covered that. And, of course, you know, Kalen Sanders and Nathan Shepard added to the Saints' interior defensive line. I still expect them to hit that stuff in the draft and undrafted. I wouldn't be surprised if they sign another cheap veteran to go there as well. But a lot of this stuff is going to happen in the draft and undrafted ranks. Now, according to Sport Track, these are the available players of free agents that's remaining left for your Saints. Bradley Ray- Roby, David Onyemata is gone. He went to Atlanta. We know that for a lucrative contract. Jarvis Landry is there. Mark Ingram, we know he should retire. P.J. Williams at 29 years of age is there. Daniel Sorensen, Kent Street, David Johnson, Justin Evans, Ethan Greenwich, Chase Hansen, Albert Huggins, Callaway, who the Saints said they were not tender, so he'll become unrestricted. And Blake Gilligan, who is restricted. So Andrew Dowell is a special team guy. So some of these guys, you can see the Saints probably going to work them back some kind of way. Uh, you know, maybe one, you know, maybe a few of them for the practice squad eventually when things kind of get to going and whatnot. But man, let me tell you something. Very, very interesting moves for our, our Saints. Got to give them a glowing big thumbs up right now for the addition of some of the biggest needs on the team. You got if you're a person that was mad at the Saints because of the, hey, the way they hadn't handled the Jameis Winston situation. You can just chill on that for a minute. Because what happened is the Saints restructured the deal, gave it to Jameis. Jameis says, I'll take it. And what that did is I talked about this before. Shout out to you, Vilma, baby. Much love to you. Appreciate you for being a pro star member for the last couple of months. Shout out to the fam. This is another thing we talked about with our Jameis people over here and car people over here. They both are here now because Jameis is a member of the team. He's the backup. Car is the starter. That's no no confusion about that at all. This is Derek Carr's team. Jameis is the backup. But what that does do, it brings the team together. So you had a lot of the what happened with Jameis and with Dennis Allen was wrong. But this is this is amended. This is amended. This is amended. This is over with. So now Carr and and Jameis is on the same team. Something I just didn't think happened because I thought Jameis would go into free agency and, and find the Tampa Bay job just like Baker Mayfield did. You know, something like that. But Jameis said, I love this city, man. That's why I stayed. I could have went, but I stayed where I was because I want to see this team win. Love that. Nothing but respect in the world for that. So the Saints fortify the quarterback position. They can still look for one in the draft. It'll be smart to do so. The the other things you look for the Saints to do now, Andrews Pete, the Saints can restructure Andrews Pete. We'll see what they do with that. But all intents and purposes look like Pete might stay. They might restructure his deal. We'll see. We'll see in time. But outside of that, the Caden Ellis thing is something that we have to look at. Is that addressed in the draft as well? Because Caden Ellis was the rotational end, or he was the guy that you would put in the 43 defense. He was the third linebacker. Many times became a starter because of what happened with Pete Werner's inability to stay healthy because, like I always say, that he plays you know, more uh, physical than what his body could take. Got that Bob Sanders thing going on for my people back in the day. that remember Bob Sanders from Indianapolis. That boy used to play his ass off, but he was a little old dude with a big old heart and his body couldn't, <laughs> couldn't cash that, you know, couldn't pay for that check that his, that his mind was putting out there. 
But the, the Saints still have a few things to do. But some of the biggest ones they have really did. The quarterback situation, they they feel good about that. The backup running back for Elvin Kamara facing legal issues. And then two interior defensive linemen to help out there as well. And cut and Kale and Sunders. And then, of course, Nate Shepard, who can be a depth piece. I still expect the Saints to kind of build upon that in the draft. So they've done swimmingly. You got to give them respect and love on that. I'm very positive vibes right now for the Saints in offseason. Very positive. Let's just say that. All right, so shout out to the fan. Appreciate each and every last one of y'all for being here. This is going to be fun, man, watching all this materialize. Because, listen, let me tell you something also, too. We talk about a lot of stuff that's going on with the Saints, but you've got to look at the fact that in the NFC South, these guys aren't playing around either. They aren't playing around. They aren't playing around. The Carolina Panthers revamped their coaching staff. They've made some moves. They made a couple of moves today. And I'm paying attention because Atlanta made some moves and they pilfering players from the Saints. Yes, they both of them doing it. Both of them taking some of the Saints players to improve and get better. But Carolina got uh, uh, Hurst, who came from Cincinnati. He was a former Raven tight end. That's, that'll be good for them. They had some people there. And, and eventually, we think in the first the pick that they went and moved up for will be C.J. Stroud. So they'll basically have Stroud on top of the team, Andy Dalton, as his as his uh, backup and the defense will be much improved. The offense with Miles Sanders, that looks good. They still looking at there's uh, them talking about Adam Thielen into the mix. So they are supposed to have something going on with Adam Thielen. We'll let uh, Rashad and Dave talk to you about it because I know they, they're going to be all up puffing their chests out like this and ready. Cause I know he was, he was talking that crap and you know, he was had the chest chest puffed out in the chat the other day. So I know he, can't wait for seven thirty to pop. <laughs> I know they won't do that, man. But listen, in the end of the day, man, listen, man, I love this. I love what the Saints are doing, man. I love how they're spending the money. They're not overspending on some of these players. They're getting good value. They're doing some great moves, some very solid moves to help their offense. Once again, let's look into the depth chart right here. Let me kind of put the big screen on right here for our depth chart, offensively speaking. You can see Carr there, Jameis behind him, Taysom, and then our backup practice squad quarterback, Jake Luton. Kamara at the running back with Washington right there. And let me see if I can kind of refresh this. Maybe they add Jamal Williams to the mix. Yeah, there you go. There it is. Jamal Williams has been added to the mix behind Elvin Kamara. Got Dwayne Washington there and Eno Benjamin, who did pretty decently in a little time. They play. Remember, Taysom still plays running back for us when we need him. Wide receivers are Chris Olave, Michael Thomas, and word on the street, Mike's supposed to be healthy and ready to go for training camp. So there'll be no restrictions or no stoppage or blockages on him getting there. We'll see. One year prove it deal uh, to see if he can get it going. Rasheed Shahid's there. Keith Kirkwood, Traquan Smith, Kirk Merritt, and Quan Baker. Be interesting. Of course, the Saints are going to add some more people here. They're going to most certainly add some more talent here, whether it's at, with the wide receiver position, whether it's in a draft or undrafted wise, I could see the Saints adding some more talent there. Uh, you know, maybe another veteran there to compete in the wide receiver room. Tight end Jawan Johnson giving a two-year extension. He's the starter with Adam Troutman. Taysom Hill also performs in the tight end room. With a Lucas Crawl, a practice squad guy with a lot of potential we're looking for. Our offensive line remains intact, intact currently with Trevor Penning, Andrews, Pete, McCoy, Ruiz, and Ramchek. Hurst is our swing guard there. And, of course, I expect the Saints to add some more kind of depth and competition at the offensive line. So the Saints have fortified some serious positions with the quarterback and the running back position, getting Michael Thomas back healthy. And they're not done yet. They're going to add some more talent to the offensive room. Carry your water. That should be the mantra or the motto for the Saints' individual units for this season. Carry your water. Do your job and carry your own water. That's what it should be for. And, and, and of course, we go into the defense. Cam Jordan, Carol Granderson, Peyton Turner to New Pass, and you'll operate as the defensive ends. The interior guys like uh, uh, Kalen Saunders was added, and Shepard and Prince Amelia is a practice squad defensive tackle. So don't be surprised if the Saints add some more, uh, another veteran DT to help out there. And of course, they'll add some people during the draft, no doubt about it. Pete Warner, Demario Davis, Zach Bowen is there. You know, finally there, does Zach Bond step up or do the Saints feel like Zach Bond competes? Could he feel the position that Pete, that uh, Kate Nellis left? Can Zach Bond finally be realized? Some people look past Zach Bond. He was what, third round draft pick for the Saints? Has yet to live up his, to his potential. Can he pull the Kate Nellis? I don't know, man. 
DeMarco Jackson's a guy that's very interesting, and he had to, you know, re- kind of see what he does based on the fact that he was hurt last year. We move into the secondary, Paulson Adebo, and his third year, Marshawn Lattimore, uh, returns healthy. We have Tyron Matthew, and his second year should be a lot fluid and better in understanding what the Saints are doing. Marcus May will be facing several legal issues this year. Uh, we'll see how it's handled, but I know that the Saints have an eye out on the safety position. JT Gray was given a three-year deal, mostly as a special teamer. For the Saints, don't forget Mr. Alante Taylor, who has duality, ability to play corner or safety. The Saints could use him. And then, of course, you got guys like Smoke Monday and Ugo Amadi, who the Saints picked up uh, to add to the secondary ranks. So they have a few things. And, of course, I really do think the Saints will add some more talent uh, via the draft and a couple of cheap veterans as well. So we'll see how it all turns and keep moving as we get into free agency. But start off with the Saints have been doing, man, uh, getting going, signing Jawan Johnson, getting Carr, uh, adding Jamal Williams, the running back behind AK-41. Love that. Love the fact that they just got Kale and Saunders here. This guy's feisty. 6'1", 324-pound interior defensive tackle with push, violent hands, strength, a- athleticism. You know, he. let's see how he looks. And, of course, we will continue to add talent later on in a draft. Can't wait to see what it looks like. Special teams, Will Lutz has Alex Cuvedo to compete with him, to push him. Because we need Will Lutz to become Will Clutch, not Will Klutz. We need that to happen. Rashid Shahid, the kick returner, the punt returner, Zach Wood, and of course our punter, Mr. B- uh, Blake Gilligan needs to be resigned. I think that's something the Saints will take care of. No way in the world they let Blake Gilligan, who's restricted. I think he's ERFA. So uh, we'll see how it all shakes and goes for the Saints. But I got nothing but love for these moves that the black and gold have been pulling off, man. Let me just tell you something. Love it. Love it. Let me ask the great Saint Think Tank the question. What do you guys think? Do you like the moves the Saints have made? Jamal Williams, Mr. Saunders, and of course, uh, Nate uh, Shepard. Do you guys approve of these moves? Uh, You know, put it in the chat. Let me know. Put yes, we approve. Uh, Put yes or no. Let me know how you guys feel about that. You can't even our most sternest. Family members can't, most certainly can't be upset with the Saints are pulling off and what they're doing. You most certainly cannot be upset. You know, the Saints are doing some real wonderful things right now. And let's just see how it all translates. All right. Austin says he's rooting for Smoke Monday. Yes, yes, indeed, man. A lot of people like Smoke Monday. He's a terrific player. Got hurt last year. A big safety. Hopefully we can, you know, see what kind of what he looks like eventually. Yeah, Smoke Monday, you know, if the Saints could have kept Trill Williams and, you know, Smoke Monday, that would have been phenomenal. That would have been a really nice uh, young safety call. But, yeah, Smoke Monday is a guy that we a lot of people are going to be paying attention to. Uh, big safety with size, and, you know, he's a guy that a lot of people like a lot of. Okay, Crusher. Yeah, thank you, Crusher. What's up, bro? Lori, what's up, Queen? Shout out to you, Soulful. Uh, Garden says, yes. All right. Trey, what's up? Trey says C minus. Damn, Trey doesn't approve. AK, what's up, bro? He says, yes. All right, cool. Prime, yes. Okay, there it is. Prime says, yes. Gundam says, yes. Approve. A minus. Slim says, yes. Thank you. Appreciate your Yoshi. He says, Mickey said, hold my chowder. <laughs> yeah, hold on now. Let me tell you something, Yoshi. Yeah, yeah. Here, you know, hold my chowder. You know, I mean, yeah. Yeah, hold on. Also, hold my orange juice. All right, there you go. I right, so sh- shout out to the fam. Japanese Hercules says, yes, good moves so far. Indeed. All right, DJ State of the Pelican says, yes, I think we need to cut Pete or sign another guard. I don't know if the Saints cut Andrews Pete. You know, it might just work his contract. I don't know. They look like they're doing it. Demetrius says, love it, man. All right, there you go. There you go. Steven says he gives it a B, a B minus. Those are pretty good grades. All right, vibing with the Jones just subscribed. Thank you, vibing with the Joneses. Appreciate you for smashing that like button. Much love to you and welcome to the fam. Welcome. Troll, what's up, Troll? Shout out to you, bro. Good to see you in the chat. G Re 504, much love to you. Uh, Debo says, Roby Taylor aren't really the answers for the nickel position. Saints can go cornerback, bro. They can. They can go cornerback. Zachary says, yeah, BQ Williams played his best games last year. Dude is a beast. Good call by the Saints to get Williams. Land him, man. That was that, that's big, man. And then the money, 12 years, 12, what, 12 million uh, at three years. 
You can't complain about that. Joshua says, I, I give it a B minus. Feeling needs. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Coach Todd says an A minus. Tron says A. Shout out to you, bro. Uh, Arvin says A. All right. Uh, Jerry says, will he be hating? <laughs> Just trash. Yeah. You know, it's Willie in the chat. WB3 in the house. I don't know. I ain't see Willie yet. Is Willie in the building? What's up, brother Donovan? Shout out to you. What's up, Yen? Brother Marcos, good to see you. What's up, brother Slim? Shout out to you, my friend. Appreciate you stopping by. Big Sean, what's happening, man? Bronze the God, shout out to you as well, fam. Appreciate y'all stopping by. What's up, Sydney? Shout out to you, fam. All right, Tragic, what's up, bro? Says prove, approve keeps us in position to draft best players available by addressing needs now. Absolutely. Absolutely. The Saints address that, you know, instead of needs, getting the best player. That is a very smart move. Very smart move for the black and gold. I love these moves. All right, uh, uh, Brother Randolph says, stop with the Pete hate. Yeah. Andrews Pete, listen, bro. Thank you, John. John says, uh, John McCain says, yes, A+. plus. Thank you, Ferg says, plus, A+. plus. What's up, Brother Ramsey? Shout out to you. Uncle Deuce says, an A. All right. Tay No says, B, B+. Plus. Thank y'all for y'all grades. What's up, Antonio? He says, uh, get your Naruto head bands ready. <laughs> Saints Nation, W. Shout out to Antonio. Appreciate you. DB, shout out to you. All right, Big Irv, what's up, baby? All right. Okay, w- Okay, Willie said you skipped my post. Okay, Willie, I must have missed it, man. My bad, bro. All right, Cardell says, hey, shout out to you, Cardell. Rainey, shout out to you as well. All right, so... <laughs> Trash. <laughs> T Dirty, what's popping, baby? All right, we got Mickey Loomis in the building, man. Mickey says, Big Q, I just finessed the cap again. I think I can get an extra 100 million. I wouldn't brag about that, Mickey. You know, the NFL, here you're talking like that, and they're going to try to change the rules on us, brother. So, you know, kind of keep that under wraps. You know what I'm saying, Mickey? Yeah, oh, yeah. I'll tell you something, Q. Let me, I, I, let me tell you something. I, 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 I don't flip that, you know? I, you know I, I, let me tell you something. All right, uh, shout out to the fam, man, on that one as we keep it going. So anyway, fam, what's up, Strider? Said Jamal Williams, great pickup. Kai, uh, Saunders, another Super Bowl pickup. I love what I'm seeing. Yeah, it's a good good vibe, bro. Uh, L- uh, LM, what's up, bro? Says A minus. Yeah, it's pretty good. All right, all right. Ryan says Nick Wright having a brain aneurysm, thinking about Mickey working the cap to make it all. You got to respect what the Saints are doing. Like when I see positive moves being made, what's up? Yeah. When I see good, positive moves being made, what's up, Avis? Brother L, I see you, bro. When I see Saints for Life, I see you. When I see great moves like that working and and, and doing their thing, you got to give respect with respect due, even though, you know, guys like Shai Tuttle and and, uh, Caden Ellis and guys like that go to, to rival teams. And I don't like, you know, that happening because, you know, they'd be trying to steal game from you and all that. But at the end of the day, you, I respect the fact that these guys use the Saints as a stepping stone and they work their tails off. We're talking undrafted and seven-round people who have the lowest potential to stick in the league, get lucrative contracts. I got nothing but respect because they button up against what the people are saying they're supposed to be because they was disrespecting them from the jump. Like a guy like Deontay Hardy, was uh, had, you had to go roll and look up under stones and go to Shambhala somewhere to find where this man was at. And then the Saints, and then that's why I was saying about the scouting staff where the Saints leave no stone unturned. They went and found that man. They did the same damn thing with Rashid Shaheed and went and found him as two. Same thing with Mark West Callow. We go and find these guys and say, listen, man, we like these guys and bring them on the team. They did that with uh, another great success story. Jawan Johnson, our starting tight end. The brother three, what, several years ago was a wide receiver buried on the Saints wide receiver depth chart. Buried on the depth chart. He converted in his second year to a tight end, and in his third year, he's the starting tight end of the Saints. You can have, you can do nothing but respect that. The man was buried as a wide receiver, switched positions, was on the back of the. He was behind garbage like uh, what's that dude? That big sorry ass tight end we had, Nick Vanette. He was buried behind guys like that. Fought his way up to pass the, the fish man and took the starting position. Got read up and extended for fourteen million dollars on two years. You see, big success story, and that happens all the time in the black and gold building. So, let me tell you something. I absolutely love that man. Love that. I got nothing but respect. Even though they're going to rival teams, it's still a success. This is a success story. This is a success story, man. I take a lot of, I take a lot of positive energy from stuff like that. That takes a lot of work. 
mentally, spiritually, and physically to climb from so far to get there, man. That is some of that, you know, you, the people think that that's an, it's an impossibility. When you see stuff like that, that's stuff that I tell my children. Like, regardless of who you are, if you work hard, you can go and be next to the people, the ones that they celebrate. You can be next to them. If you work hard enough and keep who you are, you can be up there, too. You know, so let, let no excuses stop you from succeeding. These people are are actual act examples of that. All right, Chris, shout out to you, bro. Say a minus. Appreciate you. All right. Yoshi says Colston was from Hoff. Yeah, exactly. Seven round draft pick from Hofstra, the Saints' best wide receiver. Marcus Colston, man, don't tell me about, you know, they can't say nothing. Yeah, Zach Bond equals XFL. Yeah, he got to get his stuff together. Randolph says while filling the interior defensive tackle positions one day after losing two starters, they're filling the that running back position when NFL TD leader A minus. Shout out, Randolph. Shout out to you, my boy. Brian Russell says we hit more than we miss and remember DA drafted Vaughn Miller and Khalil Mack. Indeed. Indeed facts. You can't, you can't dispute that. You can't dispute that all, at all. All right. Debo says the Broncos not making any moves. <laughs> yeah. Sean Payton. We go. I don't know what Payton doing. Payton probably feel like he got a team already. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know Willie. All this. Your Jeff Ireland's a part of it, man. The, the Saints with Mickey Loomis cap strategy wouldn't be effective if it wasn't for Jeff Ireland. It would not be effective because the Saints, what they're doing is they get guys, undrafted guys, and I always say this is the secret to the Saints' success, why they could play with the cap and still kick it into the future several years down and win because the Saints know how to find talent in the undrafted ranks, and they've been drafting pretty well. Now, we got some misses. We got Davenport as a miss. At first, Cesar Ruiz was looking pretty bad until somebody got him in shape. But we, we hit more than we miss, especially in the undrafted ranks and toward the back end of the, the draft. We actually do pretty well. Like the Saints take guys like Shai Tuttle, who was a starter. He was an undrafted DT. He started many games for the Saints and, and played for a super cheap contract before he got chipped off with Carolina. You know? Cade Nellis was a seventh round draft pick linebacker, special teamer that finally developed and the light went on. Deontay Harris Hardy, he was from Appalachian State, was it? I know not Appalachian State. He was from uh, Assumption College. Assumption. How did I say that? He wasn't from Appalachian. He was from Assumption. Assumption. Who ever heard of that? But the Saints found him and he was a pro bowler. JT Gray, it goes on and on and on. Thank you, Jelly Wick, for becoming a member. Shout out to your fam. Appreciate you for becoming a pro star. Thank you, fam. Much love. Appreciate that very much. Much love. Thank you. All right, Sydney says, BQ, why not try Callaway as the tight end? I don't know, bro. I think the Saints feel pretty good about what they have, man. And listen, they got a lot of really solid wide receivers in the draft. So with that being said, yeah, Trey Quan Smith, I ain't got enough time to get on him. But anyway, with that being said, listen, I thank all you guys for tuning in here. I want you guys to move on over to the next stream. We about to do the NFC South round table to be the PNP uh, brothers, uh, Dave and Rashad, big low from uh, big lows country and brother, uh, uh, big game James from the Tampa Bay side of things will be going over the NFC South. They're probably going to be a little bragging, a little crap talking. You know how we do. We, when we get together a lot of laughs and a lot of fun. So if you ain't doing nothing and you're just chilling and you want to have a little extra fun, follow us over to the NFC South Super Friends Roundtable for a little discussing. We'll probably be sitting on there for about an hour or so. So y'all just tune on over. If you want to know how to go simply, it's the, the it should be the thumbnail is and on this platform, you just simply click that and we'll pop right on in there. So with that being said, family, I'm going to get on on, on on that and then back on that for the NFC Roundtable. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all, man. And we'll return on Thursday stream to talk some more Saints, man. Let's keep it moving. Much love and who that. Yeah. Like Benson, I'm a who that. I'm a who that. Long as I'm living, I'm a who that. Lose or winning, I'm a who that. Sports coma, yeah, this is where we do that. 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 Huh? Boogie like Benson, I'm a who that. I'm a who that. Sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. 
Somebody please better help. Running this thing like Elf. I thank God every day I'm not a felt. Go to YouTube live with Big Q and the guys. If you ain't ride or die, the bandwagon get flipped. Been marching in, that was way for the ring. I was yelling out your shame for the championship. Bucking on town, duck down. Falcons, pluck, get shut down. Panthers ain't much to touchdown. The vision really belong to us now. So much hate on the Saints, you could probably tell. Ever since Bounty Gate hit the NFL, when things seem fishy, then you probably smell. The crooked referees are Roger Goodell. Yeah. Like this, and I'm a who that. Every day I'm living, I'm a who that. Lose or winning, I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that, eh. Where we do that, eh. Where we do that, where we do that, where we do that, eh. Boogie like this, and I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. We do that. You're listening to the sports coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. That's right, the who that daily.com. Your one stop shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelican, LSU Tigers, even the top flight boxing. So if you're a who that and you're looking for a place to stay up on your team, who that daily.com is your site. The who that daily.com for the sport who that in all of us. Pro Shop. That's right, the Pro Shop is the platform store where you can go and buy all the latest merch to support the platform. Available at the Pro Shops, we have dozens of hundreds of products available for you and your family. Unisex tees for men and women, hoodies and sweatshirts, tank tops, kids and baby items, long sleeve tees, mugs, pillows, wall art, bath bedding, face masks, phone cases, stickers, bags, fanny packs, socks, hats, and many other items. Please feel free to check out the Pro Shop. The link is in the description section below. And remember, it helps the platform. Continue.